happy, happy, happy International Women's Day. I know over there in Australia, it's already happened, but we are celebrating um, International Women's Day today. All women, from little women to the beautiful women who you know have gone before us and those wise women, and I'm beyond grateful. I've got a couple beautiful women with me right now, my daughter and my dear friend Jasmine, and also... Um, I just smile every time I see you, Erin, because all I can think about is you when you came over to your first conference to the United States and daughter in tow and Sal watching you grow your business and watching how, you know, through raising little boys to now, you know, pregnant with your daughter and now the, her in the world. So it is an honor to have you on today. I know most people will be listening from afar um, and from the recording, so I apologize for that because I know that it's um, there must be something going on here with um, our Zoom here in the U.S. where people are, something's wrong with the code. But thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us, um, especially on this very special day, which is a day I believe that should be celebrated every day um, because uh, this to the everyday sheroes, I would say. And um, let's talk first, Erin, with you. I would love if you would share just about what this business has meant to you. And, uh, you know, what it's been able to provide for you and some of the, you grew your business very quick, but not just that you grew your business quickly, you created insane duplication, right? I mean, you really inspired duplication and keeping it simple. So I would love if you would share and, um, and then we'll go to Sal a little bit. Thanks, Lauren. Yeah, I think Sal's got a few kids in the background. So um, I'll share. Uh, do you want to go first, Sal, or do you want me to kick off? No, no, you're right, you go. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so I think my business, what I really did, thank, and thank you, Lauren, I'm really excited to be on the call here with Sal as well. Um, I actually just got my card in the mail today from Juice Plus Australia celebrating six years in business. Wow. So, wow. Um, so that was when, that was right after, so Hamilton Island, right, was when you really right before Hamilton Island is that when it ha all happened with you yeah yeah so Hamilton Island was maybe May 2015 I think that's right I was trying to work out the years before so that was my first conference I attended um I think I got worded up by Adam over here he was like come to the conference and I was like oh my gosh I've got babies and things going on I don't know how I'm gonna do that I was earning nothing from Juice Plus, um, but I found a way and got my mum to come with me and I got to meet everyone and I had lunch with you, Lauren and Jeff at um, one of the incentives that Linda put on. So it was, um, we had- In that tiny little, that tiny little room, right? Yeah. Downstairs on the right, right? Yeah, we had yeah. to um, complete all these tasks and win. And I'm one of those people, if they say there's a task and you can win it, I'm like, I'm winning. <laughs> Um, so I'll go back a bit further to the start of my journey where I was actually a customer. I came in through Kira Love, who some of you guys have probably seen. Um, yeah, I was her customer and I loved the products and I pretty much had to ask her about the business because she wasn't really even doing the business then. She was really shy and just was kind of like, nah. Um, so then we sort of went on our journey together. I was a business owner as well. So I was a really flat out busy mom. I had no spare time, but I guess I could see that if I didn't change something at that time, that nothing was going to change as in I was under the pump. I couldn't have gotten any more under the pump anyway. <laughs> I was working so much that I never got to go to mother's groups or play dates or anything like that with my kids because I was literally just trying to answer the phone and you know reply to emails while I was juggling the kids so because, because I'd had really good results with the products in terms of energy levels I felt like that was something I could really easily share with other mums like that was just simple to me like I could easily share that with so many people um, but I didn't know right away there was a business until yeah I just kind of I think, yeah, I asked Kira and then I spoke to Adam and then I got invited to an event here in Australia, in Melbourne. Um, Adam must have called me or messaged me and said, hey, there's an event in the city in like an hour. <laughs> and so I went in and um, Simon Mitchell was there and Adam had also kind of started to word me up a bit more around the, the business and 
like the potential of it and what you could really grow through the business model in terms of, um, you know, that income stream source. So that really appealed to me. And I think I was, yeah, pretty much hooked straight away. No one had to like convince me to do anything. I was like, no, I'm doing this. Um, so I really just worked my Juice Plus business in around the kids and my work. So I was still juggling heaps. But I guess Juice Plus for me was, you know, something I was really passionate about. It wasn't something that felt like doing work. It was just me being able to help other people on their health journey and help other mums. So that was really what I loved, just being able to, I just love being able to help people basically. Um, so yeah, I went to Hamilton Island, um, but I probably spent the first six months of my business just trying to figure out what I was doing. Like I was a bit... Um, I don't know. It just took me a little while to figure out what I was doing. I think some people figure it out straight away, but I didn't. <laughs> um, and we were doing events every week. I, I was doing events down here with Adam. We would do events where like nobody came. Um, but I really just stuck with it. And um, then I had a couple of girls come to events and they were people I'd been talking to online. But when they came to the in-person events, they really got to see what this was and what the community is and from there that's what really created the big duplication when I was able to start growing our community here in Melbourne because there wasn't really um, a Juice Plus um, team here in Melbourne so we were just really consistent we were doing little mummy catch-ups we were doing our events every week and we just created massive momentum really just working with you know so many new girls and the team just grew and it all went crazy um so I think during that time it took me another um year or so to hit NMD I think it took about 18 months and during that time but can I can I interrupt can I interrupt for a second if you don't mind me interrupting for a second you did a lot of things there um just FYI I don't know if you know this but when I first came to Australia um I actually went over before Linda had moved to Australia and I went to go work with a girl in Melbourne and we went and we we, we, you know, we got a little bit of things going, but you did something differently. So I just want to talk a little bit about what you did to really get in the groove. And I think one, you were extremely coachable, um, you know, with regards to working with Kira. And what were the things that Kira said? Because Kira was on the Gold Coast. You were building, you were becoming an, in, this is super important because you were, you, you built, even though Kira would come down there, I think, right? you were building on your you were building from melbourne so could you talk a little bit about that long distance sponsoring and how that worked for you because i think it's there's so many people i don't have a lot of people here in the las vegas area but create a lot of independent leaders so what made it work how did you know you could do it and build that uh there was a few things i guess um because there was a really large team on the gold coast i guess i was able to go up there for a game like different events and still connect with everyone up there and then i was just really copying what kira was doing in terms of her work ethic and that she shows up for her business no matter what and i i think i really just copied how she did her business in terms of like that we really care about people we're building communities um you know she yeah we would be on our events every week pretty much unless one of us was in labor we would be on the events so we we took it really seriously we weren't kind of in and out yeah. we were like there every day showing up for our businesses i remember lauren you were doing the fast track sc calls back then yeah and i had flown to fiji for a family holiday but i made sure i was in the cafe that had internet every day to be on the calls so i think we were just really yeah, focused, committed and consistent. And then having the events really helped having places we could bring people and meet them. But then I, I think it was not an advantage being in Melbourne, but I guess it just showed that we could build anywhere. And most of my business was built online because I was so busy. But I think that having the in person events is really powerful. And but I think you said a lot of things you said a lot of things. And I think this for me, it's what's made my business um, me too. You know, I, I'm just going to say me too. You know, Cheryl said to me, these are the things you need to do to be successful. You don't miss a call unless, like you said, you're in labor or something really dramatic. It wasn't like I'll show up if I have time. Right. Yeah. So can you talk a little bit about that? Those, those, I think you said like five things. One, you said the calls. What else did, what else were some of the other things that it was a non-negotiable that you knew if you wanted to grow a big business, you had to 
you had to do those things because those were the concepts that were constant. You also said something about building. We're not just building a business. We're building community, which I think is another big thing as well. Um, can you share about some of those other things again? Yeah. So I think um, what we'd, you'd find over time is that, say you had a group of people who were doing the events every week some weeks you might feel like oh i'm just not really in the mood today like the kids have been driving me crazy or whatever it is but we were taking it so seriously that we i think i've always said like i just never made excuses around my business because i don't want to that's how i want to show up for my team i don't want to be just flaking on things and not doing things like even attending live events we've got events here in melbourne friday saturday and I go to every single thing that I can because I want to show that I lead the way for my team, not just saying, oh, you guys should come to the events. But then if I don't go, then it's not setting the right standard and example. So I think we had really high standards, you know, especially when we first started, we were doing the events. Yeah, just showing up every day, but also having a place that people could come. So it was it's like a big friendship group, I guess, how we rerun our business. It's not. And when we come to conference and stuff, it's like everyone gets together and enjoy spending time together it's not like oh that's a girl that i work with in my business i consider everyone in my business to be a friend and i think kira really taught us that and and that's really how we treat the people that we work with that, that they're our friends not just people we work with love it and also i mean how old was your daughter when you first came to you I, I remember you brought her to hamilton was she she just born at hamilton island like when you came to hamilton island uh, that right? was my middle son. He was about a, a year old, I think. So, um, and then when I brought Lily, the little girl to America, she was about one. So we had to travel 14, the 14 hour flight. I didn't really have babysitters and I was, it was really hard. Like, I think I was trying to be like, yeah, this is all fine. But it was like hard to, you know, get the right food she needed or attend different things. I was trying to get babysitters and I think one didn't speak English and I was try trying mm -hmm. to run back and forward to the room. And then we were doing our NMD speeches and Lindy was nice enough to mind Lily. Like people were always helping, but it wasn't easy. It wasn't like I just jumped on a plane and got into America, no problem. I was like, it was really hard, but I was really, because I had team going as well. So that it's that, that same thing that I want to show up and be there no matter how hard it actually is behind the scenes because even in coming to the events it's like i've got to organize what's happening with the kids and like have i got all the stuff they need are they getting picked up like what's going on it's not always easy to do all this stuff nope. we, I, we always say you know how you do anything is how you do everything and i just want to acknowledge you because you're like i'm going to make it happen right like when you, I, rem I remember those fast track to sc calls and you were always on like even i think they were not the most convenient time for you guys sometimes and uh but you still were always on whether it was a baby in tow or anything else so what would be your words of wisdom to people right now maybe they've they're like you know can i do this like is it you know is it ever going to happen I mean, you grew, you grew, but you, you did the basics. Like they, like, once again, that they were non-negotiable for you and you duplicated that you shared with everybody. Right. So what, what would you share with everybody right now? Right now. Yeah. So I have a whole list, but I'll just cover a couple. Um, so no, go, uh, go through the whole list, go through the whole list. Share We've got the whole plenty list, of time for something. Don't do couples. Oh, I, do took out you. I have so many. Well, the first one I had was consistency. I don't want to be on this call forever. Um, you know, consistency that just showing up for your business every day. Like I said, like I literally, especially building to NMD, I would definitely spend time on, on my business every single day. Um, and then positivity and mindset because it's so easy to get derailed like i know early on like i'd have a customer cancel or something come up that you know it was a little bit stressful nothing that bad but you know you could easily be like this is way too hard i don't want to do this anymore especially when it's early on and you're working hard but you're not getting the you know the really big financial return early on you'd be you'd kind of start to question oh is this worth kind of what i'm earning in you know month three or whatever it is but you really have to just sort of keep focused on you know where you're going um and yeah like as i knew where i was going so kind of nothing could derail me because i was already you know really sure i wanted to make this work and um yeah like i kind of you have a choice to sort of 
let something really bother you and upset you or you can just say that's cool I'm gonna just keep moving now and I think like so much of this stuff I learned from Kira like we don't we don't do drama we don't do like negativity nothing like that it's always like I'm keeping positive if there is something we have to work out it's kind of like finding a solution to the problem not getting caught up in the problem because I just feel like no one has time for that and no one wants to put their energy into yeah like getting sucked into problems um the other one was really just about stolen moments because I'm sure Sal will agree that when you're a busy mom, you don't have hours to sit in an office and spend on your business. And that's how we grew our businesses, that it would be, I don't know, the kids are sorted, they're having their brekkie. I can re reply to a couple of messages and I was always try and get sort of things done early in the morning. So they were kind of crossed off, like do some posts or reply to some messages, check in with team. Um, but then aside from that, it is just, you go back to the kind of chaos of the day and then you're like doing everything. And then you're like, oh, I've got a, you know, half an hour to jump on a call, but that's literally just how it is in the start. You just don't have a choice. You, you kind of have to build your business that way. Cause there's just really no other option. Um, and I guess the thing also with that is that none of us actually have time. Like, it's not like we've, we've got hours and hours of free time a week and we've decided to put juice plus on our list of things it's kind of like well what am I going to have to take off my list so that I can do this and for me it was really just watching tv at night mainly because I'd always be on calls at night um but I feel like obviously it's so worthwhile but if you're kind of not in a place where you're really driven and you really want this you're going to probably choose tv instead of putting time into your business but i feel like when you look at it in terms of the big picture like it's really important that you're putting that time in because like we do this for our families and we do this to help people so yeah i think you have to look at it from that angle <laughs> um i think just like goal setting is really important um i really loved working through the compensation plan and being able to tick off each level so because i'm quite yeah like competitive and um Love it. yeah like having a goal like if i wanted to you know run a marathon or something i like having everything in order where i'm like ticking stuff off so i just found that really helped me and, and goal setting was something i learned from kira at the start you know every month just sort of setting up you know how many customers did i want through the team how, how many new team what were all our promotions and sort of tracking that fairly closely um not making excuses that i mentioned before that um, you know, anyone can make an excuse, but we want to lead by example and show up for our teams and that everyone can say they're busy, but if you, yeah, it's kind of comes down to how you're prioritizing your time and setting yourself up within your day. Um, and then the last one, I guess I want to share was just sort of making, making a decision about this, that, you know, this business can really change your life. Um, but you kind of have to make that decision that you want to take your business to the next level and actually do the work. Like it's not just a, something where your business will just magically be successful and paying you a lot of money. You actually have to get in there and, and do the work and show up for yourself and your business. Um, and it, for me, it was really just making that decision right at the start that I was doing this. And that's what I see with so many other people that they just made a decision and went for it. And I've seen that with team when they've, turn their business around like they might have been going slow for a while and then one day they'll just be like no i'm doing this and then everything shifts and things just start to come together when they really just decide that they're making it happen so yeah they're my i, I love that because i love what you shared there's so many things that just i had kind of a little um aha moment about something and i want to thank you for that um and that was i think really being this is what you got to do you know and I think what I want to just acknowledge you and Kira for, especially is she's like, you know, she was bold. She's like, this is what you have to do to be successful, right? She wasn't like, well, you can jump on a call if you want, or this is available, or these are what, right? Would you say that the directive um, was important for you? I'm just, that's what I'm hearing. I'm just wondering if that, because I know for me, when I went to Cheryl, I'm like, just tell me what I need to do. And Cheryl was very clear understand this understand that jump on this do that and i'm like okay and like you said i had that checklist of things that i did do you think that was a lot of your success in the business because you really had clear direction 
Yeah, already because I was, literally just, I was literally just modeling what she was doing because she was showing mm -hmm. up. We were on the events. We were consistent. We were, you know, bringing on customers and team. So she didn't, she didn't actually have to like, yeah, force me to, you know, beg me to be yep. on trainings or do anything. I was just doing yep. it because that was what we did. So that right. makes it so much easier. And then my team did that too. They were showing up because they wanted to, like they wanted to be there. They were taking it seriously. Um, so it was really, we were all modeling each other, I guess. Yeah, I love it. Well, I'm, it's amazing. I just love, I can't wait to share this with everybody else because I think it's super valuable. And I just am, I honor you, you know, six years, um, you know, and, and we've all had ups and downs, right? Like we've had up, but like you said, you said, I'm doing this, right? It's like when we're in a relationship, we don't say, I'm, I'm doing this not until whatever, right? Like you, you made a decision, like a real decision. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. Anything you learned through the tough times? um just showing because, up uh, just well i really just have so much faith in the company and the people that i would even when it's hard i just kept going um and and still tried to keep focus on where i was going and who i was helping so yeah it's never going to be perfect the whole way through so it was just keep yourself going really <laughs> and it's so exciting now with our niece new ceo i don't know if you heard her today but she's pretty awesome and it's going to be very very exciting so i think i do believe the best is yet to come so yeah, stay no, on yeah. Sal, um, an amazing mama of three as well. Can't wait to meet your little one and just your boys are just precious and your story is pretty, pretty um, all excuses are equal uh, is all I will say. But um, I'd love if you just shared with us a little bit of, and then what you've learned and what's working for you too. So Sal. Awesome, thank you so much, Lauren. Um, thank you for having me on guys. Um, I'm a mum of three, as Lauren said. I've been in the Juice Plus business now for four and a half years. And my husband and I, we live on a cattle station. So like a ranch in the US or wherever you are, um, we essentially live in outback Queensland. Um, our closest grocery store, closest post office, swimming pool, anything is over 100 kilometres away. And um, I started in this business when I had a, a two-year-old, he had just turned two, and a three-month-old baby. Um, like Erin, I was a customer first, and I absolutely fell in love with the product. The business was mentioned to me when I ordered my products, but I was like, oh, my goodness, no way. I'm not doing something like that. Not because I thought it was wrong or I was sceptical. I just... It was just so different for me. Like I'm a real outdoors person. I grew up on the land. I grew up with horses and cattle. So doing an online business was like just <laughs> something I had never even contemplated before. But um, I fell in love with the products. I became so passionate about what they stood for that I thought, why not? <laughs> why not just do this? and make back my $120 a month that I was spending on my products. And at the time I was feeling extremely lonely and isolated as a mum. I really struggled with the shift from working outside with my husband all the time to being a mum inside. Um, so the business for me, like the community side of it was what really attracted me. I did not think hand on heart that I could create an income from this business but the community is what really sold me and falling into that um, was what you know really helped me in the beginning so I got started and at the time we were in the middle of a drought um, I had a newborn and a toddler um, we were in a drought but we and we also had um, lots of first calf heifers having their calves at the time. And because it was so dry, we had to check them um, every single day. And because it was so dry, my husband was contracting away, fencing, yard building. So he wasn't seeing our kids. Um, and I was trying to help out as much as I could. So literally most mornings I would throw my baby and toddler in the buggy, head out the paddock um, and be checking the, the heifers. and. Um, when I first started my business, I, I was lucky enough to have a couple of amazing women in my corner who um, they, they kind of just made it sound really easy, to be honest. They're like, 
no, you just need to get, you know, three customers and you'll have your first promotion. Then we just need to get you 10 customers and a team me. You'll have your second promotion. We'll launch your business. And I was like, oh, awesome. Let's do it. They're like, just share your journey on Facebook. And that was a real huge step out of my comfort zone. I was not a Facebook or social media sharer. I had it, but I didn't really utilize it. Um, I was quite a private person. And because I was really struggling, I had no confidence. So like, sharing and being vulnerable on social media was such a huge step outside my comfort zone, but I did it once and I received so much support from women around me um, that were struggling with the same sorts of things, which then gave me the confidence to go and do that again and then do it again. And then I started having conversations with these women um, around the products and the program and um, I was like two weeks into the business. It was the last day of the first month when I got started. And I did my business launch at lunchtime that day. And I still needed five customers to get my senior partner promotion. And Jackie and Sabine were like, Sal, easy. Let's just get your five customers this afternoon. Invite 60 people along to your business launch. I had my two little boys asleep in the next room. I'd been out the paddock in the morning. Um, I had all of these notes in front of me that I was reading. I was like so nervous. Um, and because I had never used Zoom before, a lot of the women who I invited, I forgot to tell them that they needed to download the app first because I didn't know that. So lots of people weren't even able to jump on to my business launch. So at the end of it, I was like, okay, crap. There's so many people that couldn't get on here. How am I going to tell these people? I've like built myself up. I've done my launch and I have all my notes. So straight after I got off my business launch, I got onto my Facebook page and I did a live and did a business launch um, on my Facebook page as well. But because I was so nervous, I didn't do it to the whole Facebook world. I did it only to the people who I had invited along. Um, so, and I have since opened it up just so I can show people how much confidence I've grown. Because if, if you went back and watched that live that I did four and a half years ago, I was very monotone. I had no idea what I was talking about. But I'm so proud of that girl four and a half years ago for stepping up and doing that and going, you know what? I can get these five customers in this next four hours before a cutoff at the end of the month. And you know what? I did it. Um, and I got to go into the next month with, um, you know, a pay rise, a bonus. And I guess because I put that effort in in that first month, when that paycheck hit my bank account, that's when I realized that this was a business. You know, yeah. I was doing all of that work. I was doing all that hard stuff before I even knew that this was a business that I could make money out of because I just loved the community and I loved that I had something for myself because mentally as a mom, I wasn't coping. Um, this was like my little escape um, that I got to do late at night. <laughs> and in stolen moments around my kids. So, so yeah. interesting, because I can, I can really relate to that. I just, I want to interrupt for just a second, is that Cheryl, because Asher was just three months old when I started, but Cheryl's words to me were, my job is to get a paycheck in your hand as quickly as possible. That you'd look at that and you would go, wow. And she said to me, this first month, we're gonna, we're gonna work. You know, we're going to, and, and I'm like you, I saw that paycheck, that first check, and this was before bonuses, you know, that were even around. But I remember Cheryl, when, when I saw that check, I'm like, wow, that's real. Like if I really hustled, you know, for, and she's like, if I, if, if I just hustle, like I could get that every month. And she's like, you could get that and more because you're going to teach other people to do the same. So when, what was it that made you decide I'm going to work, even though there were the disappointments? What made you just keep keep moving forward? I guess I, I really, I feel like I caught the vision of it very early on. Um, and because I love the community, I, I kind of, I started enjoying doing it like from day one. Like after I did that first post on Facebook and I had, you know, support from it, 
um, even though like I was probably doing all the wrong things and like that's such a huge tip like don't feel like you need to know it all and be doing it right in the beginning just do it and lean on the people who are there to help you because they will guide you <laughs> to do it the right way over time and you'll just learn you'll learn from your mistakes and hopefully we all learn you know the first time not the second or third or fourth time around that we make the mistake hopefully we learn the first time <laughs> Well, but like you said, like it's that part of, you know, that new, that new person enthusiasm, right? And that we, all of us, like, hopefully I love Erin put in there that she was clueless. I was clueless too. Like I was clueless about so much. Like I feel that there are so many things had I known them in the beginning, like had someone set me up in the beginning to be like, um, understand clubs. Like I didn't understand clubs actually until I was, I hate to say this, but 24 club, I didn't even understand that, that our team was, 20, you know, 24 clubs. But if someone said, your job is to teach six, help get six people, you know, to a six club, then you'll be a 39 club, right? Like I, I was like, if I would have had that to break it down easier, but we learn, right? At, we learn as we go, if you would, right? So what's most exciting for you now? Like as a mama of three, you know, you have an amazing life and, Everything that you're doing now, what inspires you? What's inspiring you now to get and keeping you going? So life has like really changed for us, and it's all thanks to this business. Like when I first started, we were in a family business. We were still on a cattle station, still as isolated as what we are now. But um, I wasn't seeing my husband. He wasn't seeing our kids. It was really hard, um, and I felt kind of felt like a single mum. Um, but thanks to this business, after six months of me doing this, we were able to say, you know what, let's go and do our own thing, um, which meant that we could be managing a place together. So, you know, Mick gets to see our kids every single day. He gets to take the board. He took my, our six-year-old out on the Pee 50 motorbike the other day behind paddle it was the cutest thing I've ever seen then he took our other little boy the next day on his horse to bring you know cattle back to the yards it was just the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life but um wow. there have been lots of there have been lots of sacrifices along the way as well so when we first left the family business um and we moved away um we had to make a choice as a family to to live apart for 12 months, um, which would enable me to grow my business because where my husband first took his job, the, the internet was like virtually non-existent there. So I couldn't run my business. So I spent 12 months living away wow. from him about an hour away in a house that we had bought a little house that had no kitchen to start with. <laughs> we virtually put a kitchen in it um, and lived there with the kids on my own and would see him for a couple of days a week when I would pack them up and head over to him. And I would literally work my business late at night. I would put my kids to bed or even put them in front of the TV like that. And I'm not ashamed of that anymore, like because I did what I needed to do to grow my business. Yep. And now we just have so much choice. And like you said, family. like it was a year, it was a year, it was like you said, it was a little bit, you knew it was a blink in time. You knew that if you just like got laser focused, right, for that little blink, blink of time, the payoff would be so huge, right? So that that's like I I like I think that all of us it's like okay, I just gotta hunker down, and and like like you said, and, and I said yeah, no mommy guilt. Um, Amanda saying that's the same thing. I remember I would say to them, look, mommy's got to stay focused for this one because in a year I'm gonna be able to, to do this with you, right? So really paint the vision not just for yourself. But for your kids and your and your husband, I respect that so much. So we're doing it for our kids, right? We're not we're making them the reason, not the excuse, right? So I love this. I you know I'm excited to share this on the page with regards to everybody. Any final words you want to share to everybody? We've got people from as you know Poland, Italy, Australia, the U.S., Canada, you know Israel. I mean we've got people all over the world. But what would you want them to know? I mean. For me, like, like I, like I loved when there would be, you know, in the beginning of it, you know, not thousand, hundreds of people on the call, right? That it, for me, it's like, I'm, we're going to show up for the call or doing those events or knowing that you're going to go through the tough times. But what would you say your final words of advice to everybody? Anything? Yeah, I guess my, 
my biggest piece of advice, and it's kind of what Erin said as well, is like events, like vulnerability and events are probably the two most important things. The more vulnerable and relatable you can be with people, whether it's, you know, my entire business was built on social media because I don't really see people. <laughs> um, but the more vulnerable you can be with people, the more they're going to relate, which means the more that they're going to trust you and open up to you. And events to build your confidence and learn how to talk about things and just, just to grow your confidence in your verbiage, show up to that every single week. Like I had a no excuses policy with that. We showed up to so many events where it was just us and no one on there and we still did it anyway because in the end, like we grew our confidence and we got to catch up and we got off that and we were buzzing. So we, you know, went and worked on our business for two hours, like late at night. Um, so like no excuses, like showing up for that kind of stuff and show up for you. Like this, it's in your hands. It's literally the most incredible gift. And it doesn't matter where we are in this world, as long as you can um, go into solution mode, find a way to make it work, you can literally grow a successful business. Well, it's funny, right? Like we, I mean, obviously there were some problems with uh, people able to get on tonight, right? It's kind of like that, right? Like, but we still show up. We say we're going to show up. We're still going to show up and we're sitting there going, you know, we're going to do this. Are we not going to do this call tonight? We're like, I mean, can you imagine? I'm excited to see the people that did show up on the call they're going to come back to this moment, right? They're going to come back and go, man, I did make it a, a, you know, a priority to be there. I didn't like, you know, and I know some people can't do it because of the time or other calls that are going on, but um, I just appreciate you all. And I can't wait to hug you again. I need some physical touch, but until then, you know, keep, keep helping so many people. And um, I appreciate you very much. And remember that we're doing our take action Tuesday which is gonna be taking place at the end of March. And we're gonna have Emma Marsh on as well as Kira Love. So both of them, if you wanna like build for that, that's four o'clock uh, Pacific Standard Time on the 31st. And then we're gonna be doing a bunch of us that are sidelines in different organizations are gonna, the first Monday, which is your Tuesday of every month, we're gonna to get together and have one giant call um, together. So everybody can hear from different you know organizations and it's a, that the concepts and the principles are the same, right? So thank you all. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys soon. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. That was amazing. So Very grateful amazing. for your time. I'm awesome. Thank you.